Freedom and beauty to everyone. I am the Technomage and welcome back to my review of Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender episode 3 Omashu. And in the last video, the last thing I talked about was about the revelate the reveal of Fire Lord Osai and how they this re this reveal was way too early and it was going to water down the Fire Lord. This is what I meant. Because episode 3, the first thing we find is an, an assassination attempt on the Fire Lord Osai. And here we have him. And we have also Azula. And we have a lot of, of exposition and dialogues that honestly means nothing. To the world the one who has returned to us and again brutality people burning alive world. possible just as i'd ask he and asola discovers that suko actually found the avatar and when i say about unnecessary revelation we have also the unnecessary revelation of asula I'm sorry about this. Uh, where was I? Asula was there, and here she is. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry about this. Because I, he's done nothing. He spent three years on an ocean cruise while I've been here. And in the original series, Asula was revealed in the last episode of season one, and then she becomes a beast. Because throughout season two, book two, Earth, Azula is practically the main antagonist of the series and she's brutal. I mean, she was a force of nature, unstoppable, cunning, intelligent, driven, ambitious. She was a monster. I mean, she was the single largest obstacle in front of the team Avatar. In here, we get, you guessed it, exposition. How oh, Azula is being pressured, feels pressured by practically everyone around her that she has to be perfect. And she is unhappy that finally Suko is up gaining some, some form of success because he actually found the avatar. And she's not happy because that means that Suko might may succeed on his mission and return from his exile which means he will become fire lord and he she doesn't want that because she wants to be fire lord and she considers herself better than Suko. and we get this about azula throughout the series again she gets watered down so much because, as I said, in book two, Azula is a beast, a force of nature, unstoppable. But then on book three, Fire, we see that actually he, she's more, even more damaged and insecure than Suko, his, her brother. And this dichotomy was genius. Like... We see the full extent of her paranoia, her megalomania, her absolute hunger for power. Here, they plain show us that she's ruthless and ambitious and all that, but they show it again and again and again and again. So by the time we get to season three of the series or because there will be the was it was already announced this will be so watered down this was supposed when we finally get to season three and we see all the insecurity all as, as soon as insecurities and why she's so insecure why she's so driven and so ambitious and so ruthless it will mean nothing because we we already saw it right here on season one 
as I said at the beginning in the first video, pacing and time allocation problems and telling not not showing. Now, and speaking of telling and not showing, we have the they arrive at Omashu and we have this terrorist attack with this explosion. You're not an airbender. An airbender? Of course I'm not. And there is a lot of uh, destruction and people being hurt. And look at all of this the destruction. And again, they show, but then. And, and they were doing so well. We see all the destruction, the burning, the people, the wounded people. And they were doing so well showing, but then they start telling. Place I couldn't wait. The and they talk. They talk. They talk. I mean, we get it because Ang wasn't there. The, the we had the hundred years war, and everything is in shambles. We get it. But no, they just have to rub it in our faces because we are too dumb to understand. Now, one thing they did all right on this episode was a little bit of backstory for both Katara and, and Sokka, where here we have the introduction of Jet and his freedom fighters. And here we have some backstory for Katara, where she remembers how her mother was murdered. And they actually woo, show how they burned, how the fire soldier burned her. And we have also some backstory for Suko. Yeah, um, that doesn't really pay attention. Far too few great engineers. And some want. really good chemistry between Suko and the machinist because he actually encouraged Suko to pursue his interest in engineering. With again some good backstory for. Sokka and Katara, some character development. It's just too much talking. They should have shown more. I mean, if they were going to talk, they should have done should have done it better. That's all I'm saying. And my final complaint about this episode is it was really long because last episode was like 45, 48 minutes long this one is over 50 minutes long and it feels because it feels long we have this scene of uh this fight scene between suko and ang because suko and airo infiltrated omashu and this didn't happen in the original series and it's long and it goes on and on and on because jet has this his plot to assassinate the the king of Omashu, which Katara foils. The problem is people discover that that because Suko loses loses control of his fire bending, they see the the people the guards know they are here, so Iro distracts the guards so Suko can escape. And he gets captured. And so, and so is Ang. Uh -oh. And that's the end of episode three, which will continue into episode four. This is kind of a, like a two part episode. And again, awful, awful pacing and time allocation. And I'm going to talk more about that in next episode. So this is the Technomage signing off. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next episode, next video. Goodbye.